In this video, I've invited Isaac Okerson from Civil Engineering Academy on to talk about the difficulty level of each of the possible civil PE exams that you can take. Isaac is a civil engineer himself who has spent years helping civil engineers pass the PE exam. But before I jump in with Isaac, let me remind you that the most successful engineers out there will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced. Whether it was due to a promotion, a salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge. But through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. In fact, this video was created in response to a comment on a previous video. Let's jump in with Isaac. So Isaac, welcome to Pass the PE Exam. We're really excited to have you. I mean, we get so many questions from listeners on, you know, which PE exam they should take, which is the hardest civil, which is the easiest civil. And I think you're the perfect person to talk to about this. So before we get to that, Maybe you could just introduce yourself to the audience and let them know what you do on a daily basis. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Isaac Okason. I'm a professional civil engineer and I run Civil Engineering Academy where we help people with their FE and their PE exams. We've got courses and material to help engineers that are going through that. And so we've, we've basically, we've helped quite a few people um, get through their exams. A lot of different uh, experiences of students going through those um, exams themselves. And it's been fun to kind of see what people take, what they're struggling with. So I, I guess I bring a, a lot to the table in terms of uh, students that are preparing for these exams. We've helped literally thousands of people prepare for this exam now. And so I, I help to run that. So it's a, it's a fun thing for me to do. Yeah, and Isaac also does some webinars for us over at EMI almost once a month, whether it's PE or FE, on some tips and strategies, which you can find at PEPasspoint.com. Just click on the webinars tab. They'll all be there. And just to be clear, you know, Isaac practices as an engineer today, and he also runs Civil Engineering Academy. And I do think that's important because, you know, he understands what you're going through in your career. He took the exam himself be the first to tell you that he didn't pass it one time and that kind of also motivated him for what he's doing today. That's right. There's a lot of lessons learned there. So if you're, if you're a repeat taker, I can commiserate with you. But yeah, I am a practicing civil engineer. I um, work for a local utility doing transmission design work, which involves structures, foundations. I also do some project management for them as well. And so my career has really launched because I've uh, earned that PE license, which should be the goal of every civil engineer to do. Yeah, for sure. And with that being said, let's jump into the topic here because I know many of you are thinking, you know, what's the hardest civil PE exam? What's the easiest? And so to start the conversation off, Isaac, let me throw this first question at you. Is it better to take the PE exam in the discipline that you practice? Uh, my advice would be yes. If you can look at where you're practicing and it applies to where you are working, um, you know, my, my advice to you would be to try to shoot for that exam. So if, if you're heavy into, you know, geotech working on foundations, or even if that's a piece of the puzzle you work on, I would recommend taking that because it's going to help you gain more knowledge in that subject area, uh, which would be good for you and your career anyway. So that would be the first thing I'd look at for sure is see where you're working, see what you're doing and try to align, um, a PE exam to that experience. All right, great. So let's kind of jump into the different kind of disciplines here now. It's said that the construction depth exam is the most popular exam to take. At least I've heard that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to ask kind of Isaac to rank these on a scale of one to five on how difficult they are. But just talk about the difficulty of the construction depth exam and, and, and why you see it that way. Sure. So I think there is a common misconception. A lot of people kind of default to taking the construction depth exam as a civil engineer. If, if what they're working in, um, you know, doesn't really lend itself to one specific 
exam type, and that's totally fine. But I think what people realize after they take the construction exam is that it's not as easy as, as they think it is. Um, and, the, and the reason for that is because um, the construction depth exam tests you on a lot of material that you need to know quite a bit about. And it's, um, it's not as easy as, as, as people think it is. So it is, uh, if you actually look at the numbers of registrants for the exam, it, is, it isn't the most popular exam typically that students are taking, but it, it is kind of talked about as kind of one of the most popular. And that's simply because people kind of default to it if they don't dive into one specific subject at their workplace or are confused about which depth exam they should take. Okay, great. And what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of rank the different civil uh, disciplines, the five structural construction, transportation, geotech, and water in terms of easiest. And where do you put the construction depth exam? Um, I would put that probably the fourth hardest exam. It's, it's going to be, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's more difficult than people realize it is. And, um, and that always surprises people. And the other thing that ties it into being the most difficult is that it requires quite a few standards that you're going to need to know for the exam. Um, so instead of just studying the subject matter, you have to also get to know the standards associated associated with it. And it's quite quite a few standards that you're going to need to know for the construction exam. Well, I'm glad you said that, Isaac, because I, I do think that sometimes people think it may be easier than some of the design disciplines, right, where you're really doing design and calculations and may say, oh, construction, it's probably a little bit easier. Not the case, obviously, based on at least, you know, Isaac's opinion, and he's, he's pretty familiar with it. Yeah, and these are my opinions. I mean, the truth is, is that every exam is going to be difficult. The PE exam is not an easy exam. Um, but people are always wanting to know which is the easiest or which is the, the hardest. And, um, you know, that every exam is going to have some level of difficulty to it. It's just the nature of, of the beast. But it, there's some things you can pick and, and look at and kind of make a judgment call if you are searching for what's easiest and what's hardest on these exams. All right, let's, let's go to the next one here. The water resources depth exam, I've heard people say is kind of one of the easier exams. Again, everything is, you know, opinion, but I've heard that from a lot of people. What are, what are your thoughts on it in terms of its difficulty level? And let's put that into the mix in terms of the scale. Yeah, so water resources, I would rank that as probably one of the easiest exams. Probably the, you know, if I was looking at whatever was the easiest, it would probably water be water resources. And that's, there's a couple reasons why. Um, one of those reasons is that they require no standards. There's no additional books. There's no additional material that you need to know. You can jump right into the material uh, and start doing calculations without having to worry about worrying about finding an additional book that you're going to have to look up a, a piece of code for. Um, so that's a benefit of it. Uh, if you look at the historical data of those that have taken this exam, it's usually ranking very high on the number of students that take it. And you'll also see that it typically has the highest pass rate, uh, typically around 70, 71% of people that are taking water resources pass it the first time they take it. And it's also one of the higher for repeat takers as well. So if you combine those things together and you kind of look at that whole picture, um, you really get a sense that maybe this is probably the exam that um, is the easiest exam to take just simply based on standards that you codes that you don't have to bring in with you and pass rates. Okay, well, that's good to know. And, you know, I did a lot of work in water resources as an engineer, and that was something that I kind of really got into. And I did feel like when I was going through my PE exam preparation, even though it was a while ago, for a lot of the reasons you said, I felt like I could really get those water resources problems It didn't require, you know, a ton of different, you know, like you said, equations, tables, etc. So I, I'm kind of in lined up with that one there. So let's talk about the most difficult exam to take of the five, which one would you frame up as being probably the hardest? Uh, the frame, the one I'd rank is probably the hardest is probably structural. Um, that's simply because the, the uh, subject matter that you're required to know uh, also included with that are the standards required. Um, if you actually look at transportation, there are more standards required for transportation, but the truth of the matter is transportation is a lot of, um, 
like look up in the book when you just plug and chug. Uh, but with structural, you really have to know the subject matter very well. And um, with the volume of standards, I mean, this is literally why people bring in suitcases full of books uh, with them into the exam is because they require so many standards to bring with them. So it's, it's, it's not just understanding the structural material, but you also have to understand all the codes that are associated with that subject. And structural is probably one of the, you know, the top, you know, the hardest one. Yeah. And just to be clear about this, because we've gotten some comments and questions through the YouTube page here, the PE structural depth exam is a different exam from the SE exam. I just want to yes. be clear on that because we do get questions kind of about the SE exam. And I think people sometimes confuse the two, but they're clearly different exams. And the SE exam gives you a completely different license. Correct, Isaac? Yeah, you're getting something that's uh, very specific that you are building bridges and structures. Uh, and, and that's when you're going to go after that SE and, and to take that exam is definitely something you need to prepare uh, more for. And really you're diving into that because that's your specialty. Uh, anybody can take the structural depth or the structural depth section as part of the PE license. Um, that's, you know, if you feel like you scored, scored well in college or something. So some of my advice for people typically is that if you don't know which depth section to take, um, first thing I'm going to have you do is look at what, obviously what you're doing in your career. But the second thing is what did you gravitate to when you were in college? What did you score well when you were in school? Was it water resources or, you know, was it structures? Was it structural material? Um, and if that's where you gravitate to, um, then I say go for it. Even though, you know, this, the volume of standards and codes uh, is definitely more if that's the subject matter you enjoy studying and that you did well in, I don't have a problem with you going for it, but I, I do rank it as one of the, the mo more difficult exams, probably the, the most difficult. Okay. All right. Now going to the next one, Isaac, a lot of engineers I hear shy away from the geotechnical section, depth section. Talk about the geotechnical depth section in terms of rating that one. Yeah, um, a lot of people shy away from the geotech, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because they didn't take a lot of it in college. But if you take a look at PPI's book, the Civil Engineering Reference Manual, and you look at the volume of material as it relates to the uh, soil mechanics versus the other sections, you'll see that it's actually very small. And uh, if if that's an indicator maybe of the subject matter that you need to understand and know for the exam, then that's probably a good thing to look at. Now, you know, obviously it is, a, it's just as difficult as some of these other exams, but there with the geotech exam, you only need to know two standards as part of that. It's the ASCE 7 and the OSHA manual. And a lot of those things can be pulled right out of the civil engineering reference manual, which is kind of your go-to source anyway. So, um, if you're familiar with any of those codes, typically they are top of mind when you're solving some problems. So there is a myth that the geotech exam is, is like the most difficult exam. And if you look at the number of students that actually take and register for that exam, it's actually really low. I actually took the geotech exam myself. Um, and I felt like, you know, this was something that anybody could do. I, I did enjoy studying it in college and I do use a little bit of it at work. So that's what I dived into. Uh, but yeah, there is kind of a myth around the geotech exam. It does have low numbers of registrants, but I, I would rank that, you know, right after water resources myself. All right. So that brings us to the last one, which is the transportation depth exam. How would you rate this one? Transportation, I'd probably rank third, um, and that's simply for the fact that it has the most codes required for the exam. But as I alluded uh, to earlier, a lot of the material that you need for the transportation depth exam is kind of look up, uh, you know, out of those codes and standards. So, you know, although there is quite a few of them, a lot of those questions you can just simply go and find in those books. And that's kind of what you need to know really well, uh, as opposed to a lot of uh, extra stuff in addition to that. So transportation and water resources typically have the highest registrants for exams, and they do have um, high, high pass rates. So, you know, transportation could 
possibly be the the second easiest as well. I would throw that up there as a as a mix between that and geotech, but that's just my own opinion. So if I were to rank that, you know, I would probably put it third as the third most difficult. Okay, great. All right. So so there you have it. You got your five depth exams for the civil and Isaac's in his opinion, the way he ranked them here was water resources being the easiest, then geotech then transportation kind of a closely behind the geotech. It's kind of like two and three there together. Then you got construction, which a lot of people, you know, don't think is maybe is that difficult, but there's a lot of codes and standards like Isaac mentioned. And then clearly the structural being, you know, the most difficult of the five, which to me makes sense. I mean, I'm not a structural engineer. I started in structural engineering and I, I kind of didn't make it, but, but, um, but I can understand that. And again, we talked about the SE exam being a completely different, um, you know, just a different license altogether. So don't, not to be confused with the PE structural depth exam. And so, you know, again, one thing I just want to reinforce here again is these are Isaac's opinions. He obviously has done a lot of work on these sections because of his work with Civil Engineering Academy. So he probably knows a lot more than, you know, the everyday practicing civil engineer, which is why we have him on here. But we also don't want to discourage you, just like Isaac said, from taking the section that you practice on a regular basis. If you're a structural engineer, we don't want you to say, oh, gosh, structural is the most difficult. Maybe I should take something else. If you like structural, if you're comfortable with it, if you really enjoy the problems, go for it. If you're feeling like, ah, I don't think I'm there, then maybe you look at one of the other ones that we talked about, you know, like the water resources, if you, if you want to give that a shot. But we're just trying to kind of, we get this question all the time, just like Isaac does. So we kind of wanted to just have a conversation around it and not just rank them, but we really wanted Isaac to talk about why he feels the rankings are there. Like he said, some of them, one of them may be like, there's equations you can look up and plug and chug a little bit more, whereas other ones, you really got to know standards, codes, other books, et cetera. And, and that's why, you know, we want to kind of really outline it for you like that. So Isaac, with that, do you have any final advice to our listeners out there, you know, that might be planning to or preparing to take the exam that you want to leave them with here? No, I just think, um, you know, no matter which depth section you take, it's just more important to register and do this thing. And uh, the PE is the springboard to the rest of your career. So, you know, get registered for it practice hard, study problems, and and you can do it no matter which depth section you take. Like, you know, you said, these are all my opinions on which one to take, but it is a common question as people are looking at these. And again, just look at what you do in your career. What, what do you think is going to benefit you? And if you're not finding anything there, then I would default to what you enjoyed studying in school and um, and that you scored well in, in school because you got to get your head in the book in a book for quite some time. So that's kind of just what I want to leave with you. And I think, um, you know, anybody can do this no matter where you're at. Yeah, for sure. And I always tell engineers all the time, it, yeah, it might be six months, nine months, 12 months of studying, depending on how you study and how you prepare. But once you get that PE license, like Isaac said, it's definitely a game changer in your career. And as long as you keep up with your continuing ed, no one's going to take it away from you and you're going to have it for your career. And that's really powerful. So once again, Isaac Okerson from Civil Engineering Academy, come over to pepasspoint.com. Check out the webinars tab. Isaac's always doing webinars for us. You can interact with him. You can ask him questions and we can also get you into one of his courses. So Isaac, thanks again so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I hope you found my conversation with Isaac helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, ask questions and leave comments below this video, and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.